Awesome. Yes, there's a, a group in the, the focus on the task and sort of giving them the state. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, they, they seem good. Um, we had a day off yesterday, so had oppo meeting. Um, yeah, really consistent preparation and um, you know, probably haven't handled these weeks that well in the past. So um, you just need to make sure we move on from the weekend and um, try and reproduce our best effort. How did you review the weekend and try to capture, I guess, that first quarter and the lessons in there? Oh, well... Um, it's probably not just the lessons of the first quarter. I think it's adapting to the whole game. Um, you know, obviously we got some bang for buck in that first quarter, but um, you know, I thought West Coast really tightened the screws and defended us really well and really upped the ante in the contest in that mid those middle two quarters. Um, and so, something we haven't done well this year is hold up when the opposition's got momentum. And that third quarter, they had, I think they had 14 inside 50s in the last 10 minutes of the quarter for one goal. And we managed to jag one goal from our one inside 50. So to be able to hold up under that sort of pressure was something we haven't been able to do consistently this year. And then um, I thought our last quarter was just as impressive under pressure to do what we did. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of lessons to come out of the game. Does it feel your faith not being entirely in your own hands? Well, it's just another good challenge for us to be able to control what we can control then nothing else matters if we don't get the job done against St Kilda. So that's where our focus needs to lie. Have you seen the advantages uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we've never played there. Uh, never been to Hobart, a lot of our players. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's probably a little bit of a bonus that St Kilda have to travel as well. But uh, I think the, the weight of not having to quarantine when we get back is a bonus for our players, um, not to have that hanging over the head as well. Uh, it does, it does, but I think it's going to be pretty unfamiliar for them as well. So um, you know, we'll familiarise our, ourselves with it when we get down there and do as much prep as we can. But you know, yeah, so I'll, it's hard to put a percentage or, or weight on that, but playing at a new ground um, does have some yeah, side effects, I suppose. Um, oh, I think I think we've improved in certain aspects, um, and I, I think it's probably just our consistency that's that's waned in certain areas. And um, yeah, I mean, I mean, from the outside looking in, you always just rate wins and losses, and we've probably improved in that side of things on last year, but. Um, to get where we want to get to, we need to be more consistent and that's especially telling against the better side. So we'll do a deep dive at the end of the year and, and come up with some focuses, but um, you know, it's largely going to be around handling pressure and, doing the, and executing the basics against those bigger sides, bigger and stronger sides. Um, you know, we're going to judge ourselves on teams like Geelong in the wet and um, Brisbane at their best. So that's got to be our marker and um, we've got to improve accordingly. We talk about consistency, you had wins like the one against Richmond, but then you followed up with a pretty poor performance against Brisbane and beat West Coast. How important is it to kind of smooth out the, the troughs and, and the peaks? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think that comes back to our mindset in some ways and not you know, making sure um, the way we behave after wins and losses is, is really consistent. Um, we get in here on a Monday morning and we look to, you know, we've got a mindset where we look to improve because um, uh, what you guys see is the, the, out, the outcome on the weekend, but um, you know what produces that outcome is preparation. So we just need to make sure we're really consistent in our mindset um, week to week, and that will hopefully improve our consistency on the field. Just on Adam Cherry, he's had some really impressive wins in the last month, Richmond, the Derby. How much do you think that plays into his decision about wanting to stay? Oh, hopefully it plays a part, and hopefully um, you know he sees where we're building. I, I don't think the last three weeks is will prove, prove that. I, I think he understands where we're going as a footy club. He understands what role he can play in that. So yeah, really the decision's up to him now and hopefully he makes it reasonably soon. A bit of a left field one. Two weeks ago we saw Andy Brayshaw in the retro jump and no one else was. Mm -hmm. And then last week, um, Hayden Young and the numbers 8 and 26 on the back. Is that a bit of a peer-led play as well? Can you it's, not, it's got nothing to do with best on ground. It's just got to do with players executing their role. And um, yeah, which, whoever the players think executed the role best that week 
yeah, gets the jumper to wear at training. Who will be wearing that? Find out in a minute. Now, just that Reese Conquer won't get the club next season. Have you had any other meetings with players about their position? Nah, nah. Um, the reason why we've announced that one a little bit earlier is because, out of respect for Reese and where he, where he is at our footy club in terms of a leader, and he came to us wanting to know um, as soon as possible. And as soon as that decision was made, we thought it was. Um, you know, in respect to him, would tell him tell him straight away. So that's why we've gone early on that one. When you do get around to the exit meeting, would you expect an answer from Adam Chera at that meeting, face to face, on the commitment? Uh, not necessarily. No, nah. no. It'll it'll come in time, and um, you know we need to get our ducks in order and make sure we're prepared for trade week and, and all those sorts of things. But there is a bit of time till then, so. We won't be demanding an answer um, on Monday if we lose this week. You changed the midfield mix a little bit on the weekend. I see some Kelsey put in there and playing quite well. Darcy Tucker maybe more. Andrew Rachel back. Does that push some of those guys out again? Uh, in some sense, yeah. I mean, Andy's proven that he's one of the our better mids, better performed mids, so he'll get his opportunity in there. But we'd still like to try a few things um, through there. Uh, yeah, like I said, I thought Swidder was a good centre bounce player. He, he ups our pressure around centre bounce um, and ups our hunt on a ground ball. So we like the look of that. Um, so we'll keep yeah trying to yeah um, add a bit of yeah depth. I, I think through there. Yep. Not knowing with Chera at this stage of the season, how much does that sort of impact your planning for next year? Uh, we've got contingencies in place either way. So. Yeah, probably not a lot, to be honest. And just with it, I think it was mentioned a few weeks ago, Nat Fife um, was hoping to sort of come with you guys in Melbourne should the game be played there against the Kilda. Is that not going to happen now that he'll come home with you guys after Hobart? Uh, sorry, what was the question again? Oh, just Nat Fife mentioned a couple of weeks ago that um, with the secure game scheduled for Melbourne, he was looking to join the travelling party and come home. Um, yeah. Is that not the case now? No, no, we're still, we're still working through that. Oh, I think... Um, yeah, Nathan's got an exemption to come to Tasmania and fly home with us, but he'll have to do his quarantine when he gets back. That's whether you know, we, we wait until we get back on Sunday or he comes back a little bit earlier and starts his quarantine earlier. But I think he's pretty keen to get around the playing group and support us in the last game. So we'll just work through the planning. And what's his leadership? Like, how has he been able to sort of lead um, on the other side of the country? Is that impacted oh, much? No, nah, he's, he's probably handled the day-to-day -day reigns over to the other leaders, which has been really good experience for them as well, um, to pick up some of the slack. Uh, he's still really invested and passionate about um, the way we've been performing. Uh, he's still on all our um, you know, playing group leadership calls and those sorts of things. But yeah, I, I think um, you know, a couple of the other boys have had to stand up in in um, his absence, and that's that's going to hold us in good stead for the future as well. This is what I love about Monday's season, Justin. How would you describe it in the context of the rest of the competition and the best midfielders going around? Oh, I think he's right up there. Oh, I think his best footy is as good as anyone's in the comp, to be honest. He had, his impact on games and impacts on scoreboard on the scoreboard um, with his possessions is as good as anyone in the comp. Um, yeah, I... Like I've said with Dave all along, his performance on the field is one thing. Um, his leadership off the field and on the field is, is another thing and his ability to impart um, his, his experiences on others is priceless. So, yeah, he's had a super year. Is the body of work something that should be rewarded in your Australian team or your Australian squad? Is it that, that, that? I think I think it is. Um, you know, I see what he does week in, week out and you know, I see what he does every day of the week around the club. So. Oh, I think he's had a superb year. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's yeah, all Australian worthy. Um, the thing is, I mean, there's a lot of good midfielders around the comp and it's a, it's a midfield game at the moment. So, um, you know, there's a lot of players worthy of midfield positions in the in the all-Australian team and they can only fit so many in. Are you expecting just one change for so one up for a uh, They haven't really got to selection yet. Um, that's the, that's the obvious one, and um, that that would mean our mids need to spit out the wing a little bit more, which we've done in the past. Um, but there could be other changes. Yeah, um, haven't really thought, uh, thought through them all. But I think Bewley's performances the last couple of weeks has yeah 
either has kept him around the team. So we'll we'll have a look at that. Is that he's not okay. No, no, he's he's going well. Um, yeah, I know it's been a real bonus for the second half of the year having Piercy to lock away some of the the key the key forwards. Uh, allows Luke and Griff to play to their strengths a little bit more. And um, in some sense, I think the concussion gave him a week off, which was uh, which will hold him in good stead to see out the the rest of the year and um, hit preseason. Um, yeah, fully fit for the first time in three or four years. Well, the game plan down back change a little bit this week. Is there Max King? Have you seen him have the big numbers there? Oh, not really. Not really. Uh, they're a really good team at connecting inside Ford 50 and they're a really good ground ball team inside Ford 50. So I don't think any of those aspects will change. Um, you know, having King down there not clunking the ball and taking strong contested marks will help. But um, yeah, they've got some other real weapons and strengths down there as well. Are you tempted to have a look at Nathan O'Driscoll before the season's out? Oh, it would be nice. And um, in some um, degree, he deserves an opportunity. But, uh, you know, ha having Andy and, and Billy and these guys, you know, pushing for selection, it probably makes it a little bit difficult.